I suppose we better start off with the dream itself. As you've seen by the title of this uh, film, uh, Ride Across America, it was uh, quite a trek. Uh, I started on the west coast and I headed off east and I went through the Great Plains and the deserts and the wetlands of the United States. And it's been a dream of mine ever since I started cycling way back when I first had my first bike and I went east to west of the United Kingdom. You know, I was chatting to a friend of mine and, and that's how, long story short, that's how the dream came to be. Um, I've always loved the, um, that's not true actually. I haven't actually liked cycling for a lot, a lot of my life. Um, but the funny thing is I slowly somehow got into it and it's been just a passion of mine. Uh, which is kind of ironic to go from hate to love in, in such a short amount of time. Uh, but here I am now with 40,000 kilometers or so, something like that. Um, and I love it. Uh, Motivation-wise, people ask me, why, why do you do it? And to me, it's like any animal traveling thousands of miles to migrate. Um, it's just second nature to me to, you know... I, I don't do it all the time. Sometimes I am a bit of a beaver. You know, settling down and catching up with friends and what I'm what I'm planning to do with my life. But other times, you got to go out there and explore, because otherwise, you don't know what the perspective and the other options are. Um, so yeah, I hope you, you guys enjoy this film. It's taken me a long time to produce, edit, and and just the whole experience of it. You know, filming every day. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoy, even if the quality is sometimes bad on audio or whatever. Um, I really hope you guys enjoy and stay tuned for the next uh, episodes and uh, yeah let's begin so I'm here at uh, Newport same with some friends who I'm very grateful that they're able to host me now I need to uh, pack up the bike and set it up and I'll give it a test ride tomorrow, set up everything, and then I'll probably leave the day after that just to give myself time to adjust as well. Right, now I need to put the tires on, I need to check if the bike's alright, seems alright so far. This is also a wrist, doubles as a wrist uh, strap thing. I might coat it in white though, because it might be better. The 750mm and then this is 600, so that fits in there. And I was thinking to buy a 1.5 liter and stuff it in there. And I've still got space for other things. So. so, this is where I begin. And that's Pacific. Just have to get some food. Leg of the journey, Highway 1 and US 74. Busy, but sometimes it's quiet and, uh, and really beautiful. It's nice and warm today. I think the weather is going to be in my favor. Favor. We'll see what tomorrow is like. I love seeing an American.
what I'm using for my phone. I'm using like this white uh, Tipex stuff to kind of get rid of the black in some of my uh, inside of some of my clothes, which I think is going to help because the black obviously in, is really hot. It's really nice to start, but I, I still have to adjust for some reason. Like the weather, I'm used to because France is kind of like this climate here near LA or Newport but anyway I'm just gonna shut up until it gets quiet it's funny I start recording and I thought it would be quiet but I think the name is. It's a really uh, just a desert town. It's just kind of very busy. I think it's also got a lot of schools. And I'm just waiting for my host. I'm gonna go to the bike shop. I'm gonna go and uh, I'm gonna go and pick up some. I'm not managing to get this uh, clip on, am I? Fiddling around with the setup on the bike because uh, the tent poles originally were being really annoying. Um, so because I had them here. But I just, I worry if it's too much weight. I added another strap just in case. Because I've added so much stuff on the back. This is at least, I don't know, maybe five kilos. Um, yeah, I can actually do a setup video now because I've got everything I need. Inside here, I've got um, a one liter bottle and some inner tubes and spare stuff in there. Um, which I just bought a one liter bottle and then put it in there. It's not not very expensive And then it's got uh, 200 carrying 2.2 liters or 2.3 to be more exact uh, Which is good. I think for 60 miles. I can survive on 2.2 uh, Liters I think it depends how hot it is um, All right, so I'm at the, my first Place for the night and my god is it amazing? Who knows if I actually you can include this video into the film. I just like documenting every day because uh, I don't know. It it allows me to. Oh yeah, and this bike shop I went to today was amazing. They were so helpful. I was just astounded, <laughs> jaw dropping, because I had some things wrong with the the, the, the gears, and phew, they were just like, "Ah, oh, it's okay. We'll fix it for you. It's totally fine. Free of charge." <laughs> so. If you're ever passing by Maruto, this town, highly recommend them. Anyway, that is uh, that is it, and I'm gonna head out. So, there's the bike. Doesn't it look great? <laughs> Big shot. Anyway, so day two, I'm gonna go and hit the road. See where I get up to today. It's a lovely morning today. Much cooler in the morning, so I keep forgetting that. I'm heading to the gas station first. Let me pick up some uh, supplies. Gas stations are easier because I can see my bike. And I can just pick up exactly what I want. It's much quicker. But yeah, look at those mountains. I'm almost at this 
pass for this summit. It is, it's a slow incline with the head. Desert. And that is grass. I just I'm I'm confused. Gotta look out for water out here guys. It's so hot. I think it's like 32 here Celsius. Or 30 at least. Look at this place. It's a bloody resort in the middle of the desert. It's absolutely crazy. I like got grass and everything. Uh, very long day, I managed to push through the head headwinds and then there was a long downhill so that helped a lot. Right, we're on day three. And uh, it's gonna be a long day today. Which I'm not looking forward to. But, um, should be really pretty views. This, this town here is insane. It's literally a, a city in the desert. I just, you know, I'm going to be passing below sea level as well, which is also crazy. Um, let me just stop on that. Okay. We got a green light. Go, 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 go. The thing I hate in the States is the traffic system. Yeah, I'm just going to film the trip as much as I can because, oh yeah, and yesterday I noticed that the lens was smudged on the way down, but at least I can still put it in a film because I was uh, holding the camera in my mouth. It was the only spot I could think when I was going downhill. So I need to use both my hands down the hill. Anyway, it's a smashing day. Yeah, and I almost forgot to mention my hosts were amazing. Highly recommend them. Anyway, they are awesome. So thank you. So I'm hitting Interstate 10 now.
this is gonna be a long day. See you at the first checkpoint of the summit. Oh my god, look at the sea. So, this first, first part of the interstate is a bit annoying because there's a climb, a very slow climb. But then when trucks like that, or whatever, they give you a big boost of energy. I think it's called like a wind blast or something like that, it's a term for it. And the scenery is incredible. I like having a shoulder this wide because the other one was way too dangerous. You know, you gotta make sure you're carrying enough water on this route as well. There's only one gas station. So. Guys, look at that view behind me. Really, it just reminds me of 395, which is in going along the Sierras. It's going a little bit down now. This is a little helpful. Look at that scenery, bro. That's uh, Joshua Tree National Park on the other side of those mountains. Right, this section is gonna be, I think, pretty crap. Uh, it's the longest section I've ever seen with no gas station between for like almost 100 kilometers. So I'm fueled up, I think I've got enough water. I'm just gonna have to ride. And I've got a headwind at the moment, which is shit. But I'm at a pass, so now I should be heading downhill. Very slowly, but I should be. There's a gas station up there. Look at this scenery. Bike's holding up well. There were some nasty sections with the with the what do I call it? Like these crack cracks in the ground, which were well huge cracks. So they were like uh, they so big, and uh, it meant that you know going over each one is like did -dum, did -dum, did -dum, did -dum. and also I'm wearing this entirely white outfit, which is working really well for, for reflecting the sunlight. Anyway, I gotta make a move soon, so. Right. So, my GoPro camera was being a bit strange. So back there, is the Colorado River. Over that fence. This is the interstate, so it's pretty loud, as you can hear. I had my headphones on the whole time, so. And this is a pedestrian crossing that you have to take. Because that's interstate, which that section is not allowed. And then there's Arizona. So I'm standing right on Arizona now. And 
I try to get a picture of the sign back there on my phone, but they're just not that... They don't look very cool. They don't make them very, um... Whatever. So I'm staying somewhere over there, so I'm gonna head over there now and just chill out because it's been a long day. Anyway, that's probably it for today. I don't know. We'll see what happens tomorrow. So you just walk around and film stuff. <laughs> Make sure the red button's facing towards the sky. I want a camera. Yeah, I'll throw that away. Yeah. Let's do a little GoPro camera. You're just showing your parents this. Yeah. But this one's smaller. Yeah, it's just for... You're still filming? <laughs> I'll stop it now. It's gonna be kinda hot. Anyway, so this is day four. Alright, I'm gonna pack up my shit. Yay. Uh. So, this is uh, day four. Uh, like I said at the beginning, and, uh, still on the interstate. I'll hopefully be turning off soon, within about 20 miles, so or maybe 25. I can't remember. And then hop on the US 60. Honestly, guys, I'm quite worried with the heat out here because uh, it already feels relatively. I mean, it feels cool, but it's kind of warm already, and. Uh, I need to get out the desert as fast as I can, really. It says it's gonna be 36 here, and yesterday it was 33 Celsius. So it's gonna be probably 96 here Fahrenheit, and then uh, it'll probably be around 90 and Prescott 80. And I had to camp last night, which is okay. My hosts were really, really nice. Showed me a lot of great artwork, which is really cool that she makes. Anyway, I'm enjoying the scenery today. Insanely long. Um, there you go, Prescott, 125. <laughs> Let, let's try and not look at that sign, shall we? <laughs> anyway, this scenery in Arizona is crazy. Look at that. It's just completely barren out here. It's absolutely mental. Look at that. Sorry, I'm listening to Rap God. Coming in. I told him I'd have to put my mind to win up.
about to leave. Um, about to leave this uh, gas station. It's a small little one in a small town called Salem, which is practically the middle of nowhere. But this is like, you know, in America they have the main road and then they build towns along the main roads. That's what they did. Not the other way around, really. Um, and then the businesses just die out because there's not enough people sometimes. Anyway, I'm grateful that there are businesses out here, otherwise I would be screwed. Because I would have to carry a lot more stuff with me. So I'm, I'm messaging my dad to say what's up. So how about I take a picture with a gopher like this? It's just nice to feel like I'm not alone out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so, I'm uh, in the middle of nowhere, heading to nowhere, and it's incredible. Look at it. I got a tailwind right now, which is so helpful. And I hope the drivers will understand because I'm not riding in that shoulder over there. It's uh, all cracked up and bad. Got my white uh, um, arm things on. I mean, this is Arizona, man. Holy crap. Currently, I think I'm done for the day because I, I can't find uh, any other solutions for where to stay. Um, so right now I'm in this dinky little village, um, very small, just out, uh, just along the uh, US 60. Okay, basically there's a fire station here, and um, what I'm going to do is probably pitch up my tent at the back. Um, there's just no other other. Um, the route I'm picking is has a lot of incline, but at the same time, I think it's going to be maybe better to avoid temperatures. I, I don't know, because the thing I'm thinking about is if I if I go higher on elevation, won't that be more um, affected by the UV sun? Because I'm closer to the sun. I don't know. It's like the 30 degrees and hotter than that actually. Um, anyway, that's pretty much, I think, the end of day four, and we'll see how day five goes. Day five, everybody. And, uh, I'm in Australia. No, I'm kidding. Look at it. Maybe I got it or not. So, I think this is finally the shot where I can get my phone out and film some of this uh, open road, which I've been wanting to get for ages. But I had to find the right road, and I think this is the one. This is the one. So, it's about, I don't know, 7 30 maybe. Um, Got a long day again because it's the United States. Um, no, the main the main problem is that how it's not really a problem, but it's just annoying um, how far apart everything is, and yet it's it's the most amazing thing about it.
don't believe it, guys, but I've found some normal, fresh, mostly healthy things. I just thought, my god, I need to eat something normal today, because everything in towns, in these small little towns, don't have anything, anything normal. So I'm quite glad to find this. It's probably not going to taste that good. So, I'm climbing up to Prescott. It's pretty hard actually. And that barren landscape down there. And there's two roads. There's one coming down, and then this is the one I'm on going up. And uh, I suppose that's just because they do that in the US. They have two lanes of traffic because they've got enough space for it. Look at this. Guys, look at this. Look at this landscape. It's totally different from where I was. It's still dry, but... Outside of this little town, um, it's about 16 miles south of Prescott. I have to climb over this well, one and then two paths, so it's technically two, but it's mainly one. Um, and then I'll be in Prescott. It's been such a climbing day, guys. It's oh, brutal because it's just a slow incline, it doesn't go up and then just down, it just goes slowly uphill all the way to Prescott with a few minor downhills. Let's just get this done, guys. It's been so fucking hilly today. My chain came off because it. I hardly used the little one, so I was shifting really fast. And I was like, oh wait, so it's not on properly. I'm usually only using the big ring. So I'm at the summit now, or the pass. And the view is really incredible. I mean, it is worth it. And there's a bunch of people who have written stuff on the... On the... God damn it. This... God, today was long. I hope it's... Uh downhill to Prescott now. I really love shower. Day this is. It's either, I think it's day six. Because yesterday I. Wait, let me count. One, two. Just 
just left Prescott, I mean, leaving Prescott Valley. And uh, there's this couch surfer I'm gonna head to today. Slightly off route, but you might have some knowledge on Tornado Alley and things like this. Because uh, I'm not getting very good advice. Anyway, I'll keep you posted on what happens. It's the shit you put me through, but not you. this another brutal climb oh they're so crap here because like they're slow they're only like what seven percent but because it just goes on for like 50 kilometers god it sucks i think i should maybe put my white gear back on that anyway scenery is nice i thought there's going to be more trees along this route what the guy told me anyway who I just stayed with but I assume that the trees will come back when I'm around this town I'm heading to called Strawberry yes the town is called Strawberry do they grow strawberries there? I don't know I'm going to find out oh man anyway I'll update you later just thought I'd mention how crap some of the climbing is. So, uh, I'm a little worried at the moment because I should have refilled for water at the gas station I was at before. Because, uh, I've only got my one liter left. And this climb is just killing me because the heat com combined with this really slow climb makes for deadly combination. My host does sound like a very friendly guy, but I just hope I can get there and... Why the fuck isn't there anything to get water along this route? Oh, water out here, guys, is really important, I tell you. Look at this landscape. Super barren out here. Very few cars. Anyway, just thought I'd show that.
Cause the scars are where prove that it's true And the ones that bleed remind me Of the war that we went through Maybe I'll leave Maybe I'll leave To bring back the sweet memory Baby, I'm glad The good times faded Cause it feels so good to forget Post location, which is uh, really cool. It's up in the forest in Arizona. So this guy is doing tornado chasing soon, which is basically a term for taking a car and chasing tornadoes, basically. Um, and I was asking him a lot of advice for what about to do with with dealing with tornadoes. And look at this American flag. Um, and what to do with dealing with them while on a bike. So I'm just looking into that at the moment. It's very interesting stuff. Um, it still does worry me, that whole section. I don't know how people even live there. It's absolutely crazy. Well, I, I think that in every single state I go to, it's like, how can you deal with the heat? How can you deal with this and that? It's probably because you know, if you've got enough money and you've got the resources, like a car and a house and money, I guess you don't have to worry about those things so much. Like, sure, if your house falls apart in a tornado, and you've got the money, or if it's insured, it'll they'll build a new one for you. It's crazy, it really is. Anyway, I think this dog is barking at me, so... That's just the update, I think it's day six. Good morning, everybody. Um, so this is uh, day seven of the trip. Um, I'm just packing up to leave. Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens today. I think my plan is to uh, head out um, to a campsite, which is free. It's just with 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 the climbing around here. Oh man, it wears me out. So yesterday I did like 80 miles with just just climbing. There was one very long downhill, but then like 40 miles of that or something like that, 35. Oh, it's just a slow incline. It's so irritating. Um, and I was very low on water. I think I mentioned that in the in the in the vlog thing in the film. What's this even cool? Is a good question, but anyway. And uh, yesterday I I got an email from a warm shower host who I was planning to stay with in Blythe um, and I didn't because I stayed with someone on the other side on the Arizona side of the Colorado River this guy was uh, hit by a car and um, he was flown out and went to the hospital and you know immediately reminded me of what happened with my dad and uh, I don't know it, it makes me very nervous riding on American roads sometimes. Um, I mean, generally, I, I don't think it's a big issue, um, especially if you keep yourself like 40 centimeters or something like that away from the edge of the road. Because people need to see you. They need to know that they need to overtake you. Don't go to the edge of the road where they think they have enough space, and especially trucks. I mean, of course, if, it, if it's too busy, then you're going to have to do that. You're going to have to go right to the edge. Um, but generally, keep out, look out for, for roads with 
large shoulders and whatnot. Um, I hope I. The point is, I hope the guy is okay. Um, it's really shitty when I hear about other cyclists who get injured or whatever, and it's just anyway. I hope he's all right. I'm not sure why I got the email. I guess he's just trying to let me know what's going on. Um, Sounds like it should be all right today. Um, and there's uh, more gas stations so I can fuel up with water, which is the main thing at the moment. Water is really important. wipe it because that sounded weird because it's so dry out here so the only way to clean the lens I can't like put any condensation on it anyway it's a really lovely view I mean yes it's a busy road but right now the, there's a very large shoulder makes it much much nicer to ride much safer as well I had this uh, this situation in the roundabout just a few hours ago where thing is you Americans you guys don't understand how to use roundabouts yet and uh, basically I was signally signaling to go left and the guy didn't see that and you know I my quick reaction said this guy's not gonna turn so then I continue to to stay away from his car, but you know, if I hadn't have seen that with my quicker reaction, I suppose he would have just hit me. I just have to be careful in roundabouts because you they really don't know how to use them, um, they're very new here. So, whew, this ridge climb is, is a climb. Look at this red rock. So, I'm so close. Shit, it's a climb. And the view is insane. Just trees and trees. Um, the downside is these people who, these hosts, these amazing hosts I stayed with, they contacted some friends, but I'm not sure. And it's like a 50-50 chance if it's gonna work. Um, my worst case scenario thinking is that there is an RV park, so I can maybe go there. Look, I have to lick it, and then... You see, it's clean. What's that thing with you? <clears throat> Looks like a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> it's a camera. It's a little camera. Oh, it is? Hey. It's charging. No, nah, it's filming. That's filming. Oh, wow. Don't worry about it. It's not going to be. So it's day eight. Um, I just stayed with an amazing family who offered to host me last night. I was I was planning to go to this uh, this forestry um, place where, where you can just pitch your tent for free for the night. And uh, and this guy just overheard of my my trip and uh, really uh, I just I'm speechless that he offered the host. The plan is is this national park. I'm not such a huge fan of the idea of the national parks because they're very superficial uh, in the way they r they run. But there's there is a national park there, and basically I'm going to try and ask for a permit. You need to ask for a permit to camp on their grounds. This scenery is... I mean, I'm lucky right now that the wind's not too bad. But if it was bad, you know, it'd be kind of annoying. Um, 
Look at this. It's just literally plateaus. It's incredible. I mean, this is what Texas is going to look like, really. But way, way longer. <laughs> Much longer. Um, which is slightly scary, but uh, you know, you've got to take these things day by day. I mean, it is really gorgeous. It's incredible. Anyway, I just thought I'd show that. today I'm gonna head another 15 miles so right don't listen to her um, so I've got a nice tailwind today and I think it would be worth it to head to this uh, truck stop thing I I'm just gonna go and see because this uh, where I am right now is a national park but to camp here it, it's free if I get a permit but then I have to leave my bike like a mile away from me and I have to then walk a mile into the... That, that's just like their regulations. And you know what? I don't feel comfortable with that being a mile away from my bicycle. Maybe, maybe, you know, 100 meters is fine, but... Sorry. I think over there somewhere. This is where I'll be camping for the night. Because, um, like I might have said in the last clip, I was gonna stay at this, um, national park. But I didn't like the regulation there that you had to be a mile away. So, long story short, I'm at this gas station and they say it's alright for me to pitch my tent behind the back there. Right now, the weather tomorrow, um, at around 12 o'clock, there'll be some really heavy headwinds, uh, sorry, tail slash crosswinds. So if I get up really early, I hit I-40, which is literally just over there. It's a lovely evening. Um, and I get there as soon as I can. I can avoid most of the rain. There's a little bit of rain, not a lot, but a little. Um, but then my plan of going up the Sandia Crest, I don't know if it's going to happen now. It says two days of, of, of thunderstorms um, on the 10th and the 11th. And I, I don't know if that's going to work for me. Because, uh, anyway, I'm, I'm having dinner, which is very exciting. It's apparently these granola bars, uh, they're 50% larger than the other ones. I don't know why they say 50%. Why don't you just say, you get two bars and for the price of one, or something. Um, it's really pissing me off that that thunderstorm's coming in. Right when I don't need it, you know. So, it's the, um, what we are on, day, this, is, this will be day nine, I think, because day eight was yesterday. Um, get ahead to New Mexico today. Um, there are some predicted heavy winds in the afternoon, um, so I need to watch out for that. Um, I don't know whether to stay at Gallup or if I should go further. I think Gallup is going to be my best option because this person very kindly allowed me to stay at her place. Um, I'll explain that later. Um, anyway, I'm gonna go and pick up some supplies because the gas station is just around the corner. This is where I camped. There are a lot of ants and it doesn't look so appealing, but you know, tent back under these trees and I don't know, it wasn't, it wasn't so bad. So, route 
66 or I-40 and um, this is what I'm on and it looks like someone just copy and pasted the side of the Grand Canyon. I tell you, I mean, I know it's wide angle, but it looks really cool. It's like red rock and State number three. That's Arizona sign over there. Bye Arizona. Hello New Mexico. There we go. So I'm on the phone Hi. with uh, Papa. Hi. I'm just uh, using the GoPro. Well, they might stay here, I don't know.